Um, Good afternoon. Um, as I've said, introduced James Davidson. I'm the general manager up at the site. Um, I'm, I'm not a geologist, certainly not an exploration geologist. So when I, um, I've got, okay, given the slide deck to do the presentation, I've got uh, a number of slides there from Duncan, our CEO, and a number of slides from the exploration manager. I assume anyone that knows or has seen and bosses the honeymoon uranium project's been around for quite a while and most of you have probably seen presentations on it. So by the time I deleted everything, which I think everyone's already seen before, I was down to about one slide, so I had to rebuild the pack. So I do apologise that uh, all the geologists in the room, but uh, you might be triggered with a bit of chemistry as we go along. Um, just a disclaimer. So the history of the project, the project, uh, as I said, it's been around for a long time, discovered in the 70s, and work was done initially on solvent extraction, the solvent extraction demonstration plant built on site, which is shown in the photo with the blue sky in the background there, which we're still using that shed. Um, and uh, a lot of work was done initially on solvent extraction, as I said. And um, as the plant developed into operations, though we were only one went with the solvent extraction process and operated the plant for a number of years. Um, there's some great photos here of showing the plant and uh, my favourite photos are those, of course, for anyone that knows David Brunt, that's David Brunt standing over in the right there near the swimming pool in his pink trousers. I think that gets shown at every uranium conference every year, but uh, it's well worth noting. So in 2015, Boss Energy took over the project. The project's been in care and maintenance for 10 years. We've been working diligently in the background over that 10 year period on a number of fronts to further develop the project. The main work done in 2017 on a field leach trial. The field leach trial really showed some um, extraordinarily new uh, cutting edge uh, benefits of using new types of ion exchange resins. And um, we've used, built on that technology to uh, go into where we are now, which is in construction at the moment and commissioning at the moment in the plant. So the plant, we've been working really on five fronts uh, in a technical capacity. The uh, work being done really uh, is based around the ion exchange technology, which, which was identified, like I'm saying, back in 2017 with, with close consultation to An with Ansto out of Sydney. But it's allowed us to do a number of other things which really benefit the project. Uh, and build on what Uranium One were doing there on site and, and try to look at how we improve and optimise the process so that it's a much more robust process moving forward. So there's five fronts there, the, the ion exchange resin, new sort of modern, well they're not really modern, but much more efficient uh, counter current, continuous ion exchange contact, contactors, looking at how we manage the calcium for gypsum, and the chloride management, because the chloride impacts directly on how efficient the ion exchange is. We've looked at trying to identify with um, a more advanced way of looking at how we develop the well fields. And, and the final one is really looking at the final product that we're making that goes to market. And, and I'll just step through all of those. So there's a nice photo of the field leach trial. There's a number of people that I've just caught up with that I haven't seen for a while that were with me at the at the field leach trials. I was only a small player in it. They did most of the work. Um, but we, we were on site for a number of months on two patterns and looking at how we modify both how we're developing the well fields in the wells as well as how we integrate that with an iron exchange process. So the, the iron exchange, rather than solvent extraction, allows us to do a, a couple of really clever things. And the first is we can, the, iron, the solvent extraction needs a relatively high pH for operation. Uh, we can go much lower in pH and that allows us to be, have a more stable solution for the, for the treatment. It also increases our uh, rate of reaction and uh, potentially the grade of the uranium coming out of the ground op operates faster. The solvent extraction had issues with iron and iron transfer into the final product. We don't have those issues with the resin, so we can actually push the iron levels up. The iron's very important to us because it, it's our um, mechanism for delivering oxygen underground to reoxidize the uranium and make sure it comes up as uranium-6. Uh, it eliminates any of the hydrocarbons, 
um, the problems with the hydrocarbons during the uranium one days really with contaminating the well food and contaminating the product has been eliminated and we can, like I'm saying, we can push that uranium tenor up. So we did trials up, which are very successful trials in 2017. And on the back of that, started moving straight into engineering um, to put as much engineering behind us before we actually got onto the ground here to start the construction process. So a number of engineering um, development programs went on and concluded with a enhanced feasibility study, which is the basis of the, the uh, detailed design or the um, execution design we're going through at the moment. So initially we're going to install three NIM6 columns. They're counter current upflow columns that uh, allow us to uh, more fully extract the uranium. Uh, the, tradition, the sort of traditional lead and lag columns give you sort of two stages. I think we've got, I think there's 12 stages in these. So um, it's a much more efficient process. Each column takes 500 cubes an hour, and um, so in total for our first three columns, which we'll have uh, up, up and operational by uh, during next year, we'll be um, able to run 1,500 cubes an hour at about uh, our target PLS grade of only 50 ppm. And it's one of the great advantages we have with, with the iron exchange mech resin and the contactors we've got is we can actually target that quite low conservative uranium grade. And uh, it allows us to upgrade to about uh, 9,000 ppm into the final end of the circuit. This is uh, a construction photo. This would have been taken, looking at that, probably three months ago. Uh, I've got the crane out pulling out the old SX columns. So if you pop onto the next photo, you'll notice that in the foreground, the old mixer settlers um, and the ponds are full of well, it's basically rainwater that's been sitting there for 10 years. All those ponds are full. The next photo, you can see there on the right there, the mixer settlers are gone. They've been pulled out. The new column's going into place. So they're lifting the last segment of that new column. That's about, I would think, three weeks ago. Um, so that's in place. And then the Aleutian column is the light grey one in front of that. That's actually got its cap on it as well now as well. And you'll see over on the left in the background, the ponds are now pretty much empty. So construction is uh, coming along very quickly. Like I'm saying, that's only a couple of weeks ago and already uh, all the transfer vessels are in, all the pipe work, most of that pipe work's now completed and the uh, resin screens are in. Um, one of the great advancements for project development is the use of drones. They not only uh, get great photos, but they're pretty good fun as well. So um, the crane driver doesn't like it when we're buzzing around him. Um, you can see the ponds in the background now uh, emptied out, ready for take PLS. Um, and the concrete slab that's in the foreground in the bottom of the photo shows that uh, eventually we're going to have six of these columns that take 500 cubes each. Uh, we've poured the concrete slabs and prepared for all of that work to go forward. So we've put one, we're going to put one iron exchange column in and start up and then progressively put another one in every three to four months until they're all in place. talked about process optimization and talked about um, calcium and chloride. The, the resin that we've chosen that we're using is uh, much more tolerant to chloride. Uh, it was the reason why the solvent extraction was chosen in the first place was because the chloride levels were too high for the traditional sort of uh, resins that, that say for example Heathgate use and they use in Wyoming uh, and in Kazakhstan. So we're using a different style of resin. It, it's much more forgiving for chlorides but we've taken a two-pronged two approach to this and we're also going to treat the ore body and we're doing this as we speak, this is happening, we're actually running it through the uh, water treatment plant and removing the chloride with an RO plant and then re-injecting the water back underground. While we're doing that, we're also taking the opportunity to treat it to remove calcium. So one of the historical issues at the plant was gypsum formation in the wells, in the ore body and in the plant. We're going to wear a bringing that calcium level right down, bringing the chloride level right down, and then bringing the pH down in those, in the ore body, and then we're just going to let it sit there until, um, until we need to go and leach those and bring them into the plant. Like I'm saying, that's, we're doing that as we speak. Water treatment plant, for those of you that are familiar with the plant, the main upgrade is on the, uh, 
right hand side of the photo with the new RO plants being put in. So we've got a much bigger RO capacity. We can do 500 cubes an hour through those RO plants. Gives us a lot of flexibility in what we're doing. It, it's really a boots and braces type approach of making sure that, you know, if something doesn't go exactly as we plan, we've got plenty of ability to turn um, to other alternatives to actually bring us back to where we need to be. The rest of the plants just simply being upgraded, uh, new feed wells, new underflow pumps, etc., etc. It's pretty simple, straightforward um, water treatment. We got the option of treating it with with lime, with caustic, or with soda ash. At the moment, we're running uh, a simple soda ash precipitation and softening, and you can see in the top thickener there, we're getting a fair bit of iron precipitation. In the bottom one, we remove. Uh, we remove the calcium and uh, you can see the different colours in the neutralisation and softening reactors so you can s we, we can track where the iron is really with the colour. The laboratory is up and running again so we're actually getting some assays back now so um, this is tracking pretty well. From that water treatment plant we make uh, a small amount of sludge, we call it gypsum but it really is a mixture of gypsum, iron hydroxides and other material and that goes out to our dedicated gypsum pond, which is uh, double lined with geofabric in between. And uh, we started discharging enough in there just to make sure that we don't get a storm and the poly lifts or anything. So that's just got a very low layer of water in it at the moment. Um, that was completed probably two months ago. The other bit of optimization, which is um, I'm starting to uh, move into the realm of geology, uh, Previously, there was only a limited amount of information on where the ore was in the ore in, in the well field, depending on um, the lithology of the well field mostly and, and the way that um, the well fields were designed was uh, in a production sense, they were really having to get them up and running pretty quickly. We've had the opportunity to sit back and evaluate this stuff and we've had hydrogeologists geologists and geologists looking at this for a number of years now. So. We've taken the advantage of taking a much more um, steady, steadfast approach in preparing these well fields. We're also using new and modern tools for the lithology, which really helps us map much closer where the sands are, where the flow units are, so that we can really, once we've developed the well field, we've drilled all the wells, then we've done the lithology work with the tools and uh, we've done the grade work with the PFN, then we sit down and design it once all of the wells are in place. So we can make sure that, that each of those screens is covering as much uranium as we can, and also that uh, we're in paleo channels where the sands are connected. So one of the problems you have with honeymoon is it's quite a patchy ore body, and not all it's not a big tabular sand under there. It's much more complicated than that in the third dimension. So we've done a lot of work here looking to make sure that we can capture as much of that uranium as possible. And the other big advantage we have with the iron exchange resin is we can target that like I was talking about before, the lower, the lower uranium grade of only 50 to 75 ppm is our target. So we, don't, we can actually take quite a lot of dilution in. So what we've done with a lot of our screens is we've raised the screen width up. We're making sure we're getting a lot more of the uranium covered and we're doing some split screens as well. So we're take, really taking advantage of this, like I'm saying, the iron exchange really allowed us to open a number of other windows for us to optimise the process. And the well-filled people have finished that. The first three well fields are already drilled. The first three well fields are already um, cased. The first one is got the well house and all of the pipe work completed. The next two we just need to pull some pipe work and, and they're ready to go as well. So the well field people are well ahead of construction, have been for a number of months. This is well field B1 looking back towards the plant. This is a reasonably old photo. Um, but just shows that this has been ready to go for quite a long time as my welfare manager keeps reminding me. Um, and um, all very neat. It's divided up into a number of cells and um, this photo was obviously taken in early July because we just had a massive amount of rain. Um, for anyone else who was out there at the time, we didn't, couldn't get a truck through our plant for, the, for 28 days. So the only truck that came through was the food truck and it was pulled through with a, uh, a grader. Um, and we were coming in and out with helicopters to keep the project up and running and on time. 
The last bit of optimisation is with the kiln. Uh, the current currently in, in the plant is low temperature dryers, producing a U04 product. Um, we're doing the high temperature kiln, going to 800 degrees and converting everything to a U308 product. The, there's two main reasons for it. One is the converters like that as a final product more than the, the, uh, the dried product, the calcine product. It gives us more flexibility of who will buy it, so we, it doesn't limit our, our sales to converters or to final clients. It's cheaper to ship because you get more of it in the drum and uh, it eliminates any problems with any organics that get into your final product. So it, because any organics that get in there get burnt off at the higher temperature. So that's not our kiln, that's someone else's. Ours is ready to go in. Exploration. Uh, with the Explorers Conference, so I, I left one slide in. We've got a pretty aggressive exploration program uh, next year. We're gonna be going across uh, three different packages. We've got the uh, near mine, work, which is going to happen just north of our mine boundary on our, on our tenements. We're going to go to the western tenements in, in near Goulds Dam, Sunrise and Billaroo and, and redo a lot of drilling out there. Um, in fact, the near mine stuff, they, that's the reason I'm doing the presentation, our exploration managers out there today, uh, kicking off a program at Jason's. Uh, so the western tenements will uh, be running all of next year and then we recently pick up the Kinlock project in the southern tenements. and. Um, We'll be drilling there. We'll probably do a lot of geophysical work this year and then move into drilling down there next year. I won't really talk about that. I think I've talked about everything there. We are ready to restart. We are um, we'll be reducing PLS before the end of the year and producing um, uranium in the first quarter of next year. It's been a long uh, project, a lot, lot, a long lead up, but we're ready to go. So, thank you.